Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. Today I want to talk about a topic that many environmental engineers and people in general consider at some point in their career, which are the pros and cons of working in a public and a private sector. I'm going to separate this video into two parts. The first, this video, we'll talk about the public sector and part two, we'll talk about the private sector. Now I've worked in both sectors, so I can say with credibility that I've experienced both within my working years. I do have to say that there are some major differences between the two. A lot of you may have already heard or know about the stereotypical advantages or disadvantages between the two, and they are indeed true. But I just want to give you a more relatable and a concrete example of each. Currently, I work in the public sector, meaning the government work. I'm considered a public servant, and I work for the state of California as a water resource control engineer. But before the job, I worked as an environmental engineer contracted by the U.S. Air Force from a private company. And I know what you're thinking. The Air Force, like that's the part of the government and you'd be right. But they didn't want to give us like civilian pay and benefits so they just contracted us from some other private company to do what government workers would normally do. All I'll also say is that I worked for a private company but just located on an Air Force base. So with my experiences spanning between both realms, let's explore the key advantages and disadvantages of each. First, let's talk about the advantages of working in the public sector. Number one, stability and benefits. One significant advantage of working in the public sector is the stability and the benefits that it offers. Government positions often come with competitive salaries, comprehensive healthcare coverage, retirement plans, pensions, and job security, which really provides a sense of stability for long-term career planning. So this is the ideal situation for anyone who wants a stable and predictable type of job. You know, you don't need to worry about like layoffs or like a bad economy. The income is stable and you really have really good job benefits. So for example, at my current job, after you, you pass the six month probation period, which is where they gauge whether or not you'd be a good fit, they pretty much cannot fire you at that point unless you do something criminally illegal or something completely dumb. So that means you could be lazy or not have like a good relationship with your coworkers, but they still can't fire you. People would just like complain about your workmanship, but again, they cannot fire you. At worst, they'd probably just transfer you to another section, but you'd still have your job. Also, the job benefits are pretty good since like we're under a union. So this union protects us from getting fired or laid off, and they fight really hard to give us like these good benefits in the future. But the best thing is the pension. That's like the most prized possession from this job because not many jobs offer pensions anymore. We also have like an optional 401k retirement plan that you can invest on top of your pension. So they really incentivize you to work and stay here long term. Next is the mission driven work. The public sector role in environmental engineering typically focus on serving the community and protecting the public health and the environment. So the sense of purpose can be highly rewarding knowing that your work directly contributes to the greater good and improved quality of life for future residents. And I know most jobs will try to narrate that you're contributing to the world, but you know this one hits really different. Because you're in the environmental field, that's already a good argument saying that you're planting a seed that will protect the future environment. But because you're also working for the government, it's not something that's highly profitable. You know, who got rich off of saving the planet, right? Exactly, not many. It's not a money-making machine. So public sector jobs, especially towards sustainability and the environment, are highly focused on the person's motive. It focuses on the question of like, why are you working at this job? You're not getting paid a lot. If you want to work in the public sector, that really means that you have good intentions and it's probably you know, not money related. Lastly is your work-life balance. Public sector positions often prioritize work-life balance with standard working hours, you know, gender certifications and sick leaves, and minimum pressure to work overtime, probably because they can't pay you that much. So this can lead to a better quality of life and less stress compared to like private, more demanding, stressful sectors. So at my job, we have the standard federal holidays, which is about like 11 days per year plus one federal or one folding holiday, which is like just a day off that you can take anytime. So that means roughly 12 days where you do not have to work and you still get paid. On top of that, we get vacation hours, which could equate to about like say one day per every one month worked. So you get about 24-ish days a year where you don't have to work and still get paid. So roughly that's about like one month off a year of free money. Now, depending on your job responsibilities, you could also get the option to work from home. And this is where my office job really shines. So I get the benefit of working from home and I only have to go into the office currently about 
twice a month. Yeah, you heard me right. Only one time every two weeks. So most companies are already opting other employees, you know, back to the office like five days a week. But at my work, we we're actually pushing hard to avoid that because we sort of deemed it as unnecessary after figuring out like we could still work at home and be efficient after the whole COVID crisis. So because we get to work from home, that means we're saving time commuting, going to work, saving money by, you know, just not eating out and just being more comfortable at home. All that saved time and money goes back into investing into our own life and doing whatever we want that makes us happy. All right, great, so I've sold you on all the good things, right? <laughs> well, not really. Now that I've talked about all the good things in the public sector, let's talk about the bad things because there's also some many disadvantages of working in the public sector. The first one is bureaucracy. So one of the main drawbacks of working in the public sector is navigating through bureaucratic processes. Decision-making can be slow and projects may face delays due to some administrative hurdles and just government regulations leading to you know, frustration from us and inefficiency from the whole process. So this is especially true and amplified in an office environment. You have office politics, but you know, like way worse. In this situation, I just try to keep my head down and you know, stay out of the trouble and the drama and just continue my work. Since I'm like the lowest person in the totem pole, it's not really up to me to decide on major points so that puts less pressure on me. So really, I'm not the person to blame because I can't really make much of an impact. The second disadvantage is limited opportunities for advancement. While public sector positions offer stability, advancement and opportunities could be limited compared to like private sectors. This is true, but it's probably the same for both like public sector and private sector. You can't exactly move up the ladder unless the position is open. Meaning the only way you can climb up is for someone to leave that position that you're wanting to get. And sometimes the only reason for someone to leave is that they move on to somewhere else or they retire. But it's bad because here in the public sector, given all the benefits of the job, who would want to leave a cushy job like this? That means the only way someone would leave is typically through retirement and typically waiting for that is like a long time. Third is budgeting constraints and limited resources. Public sectors often operate within a budget constraint, which means limited resources available for projects and initiatives. So this can impact the scope and environmental engineering projects altogether. Projects and like my paycheck are typically funded by your tax dollars. You know, I pay my taxes, you pay your taxes, but most of my paycheck collectively is paid for by you or the state. At least that's how I think the system works. Anyways, because our projects are funded by a known and given source, that means it usually depends on how well the economy is doing for that year. Not every year the US economy can do well, so that means in a bad US economy, less tax dollars are collected, and less money is given to certain projects. Also, because we have a very bureaucratic system with our office politics, some projects are funded more so than others. Because of all this, we have a very rigid budget system where we can't hire new people and expand our team because once that new position is open, it's sort of permanent. And say for example, you have an amazing year and we have all this extra money, we have to consider, can we afford to keep this new position indefinitely? What if we have like a bad economy next year? We can't exactly lay off this guy and erase his position because then the union would fight so hard against it. So the government would have to be absolutely sure that they can sustain the current pay and the current position from now on and in the future if they ever decide to open up position. That's probably why I think it's so hard to get a government position just because of this money constraint. Once you're in, you're good and you're set for life. But the hardest part really is getting in. All right, with all that being said, I'll wrap up this video and talk about the private sector in another future video. So be on the lookout for that in the near future. But for now, I hope you guys had a good glimpse of what it's like to be working for the public sector or like a government job. You know, just weigh your options carefully if given the opportunity to pick and choose between the two. That's all for this video. Goodbye.